Good morning and welcome to our devotion today on the 19th of August. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, and I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today we read from Acts 17, verses 26 and 27. And God made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us. Paul once preached these great truths in the public market of the world-famous city of Athens, Greece. He taught that after God created the world, he did not depart like a human builder. Instead, he continues to preserve and govern his work. If we consider the world only with the eyes of our understanding, it appears as if people determine for themselves and God is just an idle spectator. However, if we look at people's actions with the eye of faith in the light of God's word, we see something completely different. Paul says that everything that happens was appointed by God beforehand, even from eternity. God has set an end for everything and determined how long a person should live. While people seem to behave according to their own free will, God secretly has them in his hand and directs them so that they do not carry out anything except his eternal decrees. God has both the good and the evil in his all-directing hand. Either he places limits on them or he lets them happen and accomplishes his judgments of grace and wrath with them. We have a glorious example of this in the selling of Joseph by his brothers into slavery in Egypt. With this, they intended to do evil to Joseph, but God instead did good with it, and he carried out his eternal intentions of peace on Joseph and on his entire chosen people of Israel. While the world and hell raged against God, trying to take his glory from him, to cast him down from his throne and to destroy his kingdom, these hostile powers unknowingly fought for God to promote his glory and to strengthen and increase his kingdom. We also see this in the bloody persecution of the first three centuries of the Christian era. This should have been enough to exterminate the church, but like a tree moved by storms, it sent its roots deeper into the earth. On the last day, when the play of the earthly life of humanity will have concluded, the enemies of God will clearly recognize with terror, but the elect with rejoicing, that nothing happened outside of God's will, that everything good and evil had to serve him, and that he has led everything to a glorious and blessed end. How confident then a believing Christian can be. If something happens according to or against his will, he knows that it happened according to God's good and gracious will. Whether fortune or misfortune befalls him, he knows it is in accord with God's counsel. If he has many cunning and mighty enemies, he knows they cannot so much as bend a single hair on his head without being allowed by God to do so. If a person is robbed of everything, goods, honor, and joy, he knows all of it was taken from him by his God through other people, but that God cannot have intended it as evil. If the future appears to be full of danger, he knows nothing will come upon him that God has not intended for him in grace. And so we pray. Lord, as thou wilt, deal thou with me. No other wish I cherish. In life and death I cling to thee. 
O oh, do not let me perish. Let not thy grace from me depart, and grant an ever patient heart to bear what thou dost send me. Amen. And we pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join together in prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hand I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.